the ruling People's Action Party goes into the election on the back of the COVID-19 crisis. Singapore is phasing in a return to normal after weeks of circuit breaker measures, which saw life come to a virtual standstill as workers and students stayed home. The government has had to dip into past reserves by as much as $52 billion, unprecedented in the country's history. Political analysts say the government's handling of COVID-19 may be a golden opportunity for Singapore's ruling party to receive a strong mandate from voters. Saifabari Ismail reports. These are scenes of what has become a regular life since the COVID-19 pandemic struck Singapore in late January. And since then, the government has been focused on fighting the pandemic, ensuring infection rates are managed in the community and among the foreign worker population. And most importantly, rolling out no less than four budgets to help Singaporeans tide through the unprecedented effect of the pandemic on the economy. The government has made it clear that the task ahead post-COVID is a huge one and that it wants a strong mandate to get it done. So it is not a set of issues that we deal with over the next you know, six to nine months or one year, but a set of issues that we need to deal with over the next five and even ten years for us to emerge stronger, for us to uh, manage this crisis of a generation as best as we can. So it is important for all Singaporeans to begin to focus our minds on how we can come together to overcome this crisis of a generation and how we can then rally together to emerge stronger. And that requires a long runway. Analysts say holding an election during this crisis may benefit the ruling People's Action Party. COVID-19 is actually a very important campaigning of the PAP and where the opposition is silent. In fact, the opposition doesn't exist anywhere. The opposition has been totally marginalized. Hence, what you are seeing is an effective election campaign whereby the PAP is going to go to the public and say, hey, listen, I address COVID, the most serious non-traditional security threat to confront this country, and I've done well. It's going to be a long run to overcome totally, but we have done well. We are not collapsed. We are not a broken society. Singapore's fight against COVID-19 began in January when a multi-ministry task force was formed and the first confirmed case was detected. The situation looked to be under control until April when reports surfaced of infections among Singapore's large foreign worker population living in dormitories. In the days and weeks that followed, the daily infection rate jumped to hundreds as the government tested more and more workers and started segregating healthy and infected workers in an attempt to put a stop to the increasing number of infections. The outbreak in the dormitories brought to the fore the issue of Singapore's dependence on foreign workers. Where they let the ball down was with regard to the foreign workers' dormitories. So I think this issue will go on for a while. But the onus will then be on the government of the day, the party in government, uh, to convince uh, the electorate uh, the policy that they have in place uh, and, um, and that uh, they have the right balance and configuration uh, where you have uh, sufficient uh, my, uh, foreign workers to fill the economy because foreign workers uh, do uh, contribute significantly to our economy. This election will be the first to be held under new laws passed in May, allowing for special temporary arrangements for election activities. The law allows voters who are on stay-home notice to vote under special arrangements and lets candidates authorize a representative to file nomination papers for them if they are unfit to do so. There will also be more polling stations to ensure safe distancing during the voting process. Holding an election during the pandemic uh, will certainly divide opinion. So I think uh, more than holding the elections during the pandemic. I think the assurance that the government gives to the electorate that uh, they're on top of things, that they are, the safety of the electorate is not compromised, 
the integrity and the fairness of the election process is not compromised. I think if the government is able to give that assurance, uh, I think they will have uh, sufficient support from the electorate to hold the elections during this, uh, during this uh, uh, period of the pandemic. The upcoming polls is also significant because it is expected to be the last one to be helmed by PAP's Secretary General Lee Hsien Loong. Mr Lee, who is also the Prime Minister, has been preparing a leadership transition to continue the challenge of taking Singapore forward. The fourth generation leaders like Deputy Prime Minister Heng Sui Kiet have been on the front line of the government's battle against COVID-19. The public has had a front row seat to how they are managing the crisis. But observers say this election has to be about more than just COVID-19. It's still about presenting to Singapore a new leadership transition that's taking in place. It's still about talking to Singaporeans about what are the necessary uh, reforms that we have to carry out for the future for the prosperity of Singapore. This cannot be a referendum on how PAP has done during COVID. This is about elections, choosing the best team to lead Singapore into the future. That's the issue. Defeating COVID-19 is just half the battle won. The next government will face a bigger challenge to revive a battered economy in the middle of a looming recession, the worst since independence.